Oh my goodness, welcome. <laughs> Hi, I sent you a private message going, please go take a break and take get a drink. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I know, and I'm like rushing. I was like, I gotta get back. I gotta do the magic. And it's, <laughs> it's, and it's because I didn't really get to do the sacred circle uh, because for me, it was like so early in the morning. And so I was like, oh my God, let me do this with Emer. And uh, I have my candle, which I haven't lit yet. So we can do this together. So I, was, mm-hmm. so I love this because I mean, who better to cast a circle with than my resident witch? So like, yeah. so I'll just do this really fast. And then also I'll give you a chance to call on the witches into the sacred space. Mm. So I cast this circle around me and all the beautiful participants of high magic. We cast this circle to create a space beyond space and time beyond time. We cast the circle to block out all energies and spirits that are not allies of ours. We cast the circle that all energies raised herein remain confined as above, so below, as within, so without, the circle is sealed. Into the sacred space, I call the elements earth, air, water, fire. I also call in starlight and all of the elements that make up creation. I call in the directions north, south east, west, above, below, and within. And I call in all the beautiful divine beings that have brought their overlighting love and presence, their magic to this glorious occasion. I call in Merlin, the great wizard, be here. Call in Morgan Le Fay, Morgan Le Fay, King Arthur, Guinevere, and the Lady of the Lake. Because Emer is here, we call in the Knights of the Round Table, and the witches who are their divine counterparts. Oh my goodness. I also call in the Egyptian gods and goddesses we've been working with, Isis, Osiris, Anubis, call in Hathor, Sekhmet, Ptah. I also call in, I believe, I think, have I listed them all, Bast, Bast, Baset, and Ra. Oh my goodness. I feel like I call them in so often at this point that I think they should just know. It's like, I'm calling everyone in Um, and just calling in Odin, Freya, Thor, please be here with us. I call upon the Tuatha Danann, the great gods and goddesses of Ireland, please be here with us in this holy sacred space. I call in Bridget, of course. I call in Bridget and I call in the Morrigan, who I'm so grateful to welcome. And last but not least, before I hand it over to you to call in some beautiful divine beings, I call in the fairy realms because I know they really want to make their presence known today. So Emer, is there anyone that you want to call in? I, I know I call the witches in a little bit, but it's like, no, you, I feel like you're the one that has to call them in. I just feel like that's your superpower. Oh, that's gorgeous. Well, the Kalia, the Kalia yes. voice is like me, 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 me. <laughs> Bring me in. Yes. No, it was so funny because I felt her leading up to this event. And because I, I always think of like, I'm like, oh, Emer's bringing the witches. And I, I don't know, like I feel them as this collective energy, but the Kaliak herself, like, I don't know, she's like as old as the land. And so mm-hmm. she just feels so distinct compared to the other witches, yes. but it's definitely calling the Kaliak into the space. And I'm just so excited. Uh, the sacred intention we've really cast for this whole event and for the sacred conversation today with Emer is the reclamation of magic. And I'm just so excited to be here with you. There's, there's no one else I'd rather have this conversation with because since you and I first met, I know it's been over two years we've known each other. It's like, I just feel like part of, I think our, our joint soul mission really is to bring magic back to the planet in a big way. And I think that one thing I've learned from connecting with you is there are many different kinds of magic there. I feel like there are as many different kinds of magic as there are human beings on this earth. And that's the whole thing is I feel like we get to come together and celebrate. We get to celebrate all the different strands of magic, all the different people that lived and walked the earth, owning their wisdom, owning their sacred medicine. And I feel like one thing that you really do, and I'm, I'm going to introduce Emer in a minute for anyone who's not familiar with her, but like Emer really champions the witch and she champions those souls whose stories have been lost. And that's mm. something that I really feel that you do. I think there have been so many emails I've read of yours. I think there was one you wrote even just recently 
and just about like uh, the story of of someone who is like uh, we're remembering around this time. I'm I'm. It was like the last email you sent out. I'm gonna I'm getting a hit to ask you about it. So so I really want to really presence that Emer really brings you the stories, the stories that have been forgotten by humanity that we need to remember to really reclaim our power, our purpose here, and our magic. And uh, so let me. Before I wax on too long, uh, let me just share a little bit about Emer. And Emer's bio like does not convey the depths of her magic. She is truly awesome um, in, in every sense of the word. So Emer is an earth witch and sacred storyteller. She is also a self-development trainer, soul-based coach, writer, poet, and nature lover. In Irish mythology, Emer is said to possess the six gifts of womanhood. She sets out to expand and rewrite ancient stories to bring her fullness and wholeness back in. Emer is from Dublin, Ireland, and lives in central Scotland with her husband, three children, and her puppy, Riley. So Emer, oh my God, welcome. And so- I want to ask, I'm, I'm going to do like the, the question I'm asking everyone, like what is magic to you? But first I really would love for you to share about that email you just sent out about that. I think it's that beautiful soul um, who was uh, forgotten. I think you were, you just had a conversation with Cheryl Prince, I think about him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Philip Cairns. Yeah. That? That's the one yes. I think. Oh yeah. When you said that you wanted to bring him in, I could feel, I could really feel that. And all of what you've shared like I feel I feel quite emotional actually being here it's like I'm like hopping into this party and being so accepted and welcomed it's beautiful really beautiful um yeah so Philip Cairns he I actually had because I know Cheryl's speaking in this event as well and I had a session with Cheryl last week I mean we speak every day the witches it's another beautiful synchronicity the witches brought us together as well and at the end of the session I was like I just started talking about Philip Cairns and a recurring nightmare that I used to have and then Philip Cairns going missing when I was 12 he was 13 and we live on the same road I didn't know him but like it's a long road and we live at kind of other ends of the road but he went missing and this is 36 years on there hasn't been a trace of him found and for some reason it just synchronized with this talk we decided we'd have a chat and share it with people didn't know what exactly it was going to be about but it happened to be I discovered on the anniversary of him going missing oh wow it was so weird. it was like he needs to come into the space okay that makes sense I'm gonna yeah. let you yeah. just, I didn't know that it was the anniversary yeah, yeah. So that was the 23rd of October and his mother lights a candle for him every night to guide him home. And for me, when I connect with this 13 year old boy who had just started high school, was walking back to school after lunch and a busy time and nobody saw anything. He just disappeared like there's magic and there's magic. There's divine <laughs> magic and there's distorted magic you know he disappeared into thin air um and when I connect with him all he wants is to come home mm. I feel him in the spirit world and I feel him he's cold he's confused and he just wants to come home as well which I feel is is what us witches wise ones mad magicians healers druids it's what we can help with when we cast this circle that you've cast where only the divine may enter and all distortions, you can stay the feck out of here. <laughs> stay out because this is the purity of the new earth that we are we are living in now. So, yeah, thank you for inviting yeah. him as well. Yeah, because I think you said like he wants to come home. So I think that it's almost like in these sacred spaces, I know like, we, you know, there's, we can't go back and change time, but I think we bring the sacred remembrance and I think we can honor. That's one thing that I just really feel that you do is I really feel that you share the stories that others mm -hmm. have forgotten. And by telling those people stories, you bring them back to life. That is sacred resurrection magic. 
I mean, if you, I'm always <laughs> getting, I'm getting like, I have a candle. I want to light in a second, but I'm getting choked up because I think I've said this on your summits before that like, we are telling stories now, especially like some of the myths that we tell that have been told for two or 3000 years. The stories our ancestors told, they are alive through us. And so I think that's what's so beautiful when we realize the immortality that stories bring to our loved ones, the immortality. And I feel like there is a, I didn't plan today to talk about the magic of storytelling, but I do think that there is something, when we talk about the reclamation of magic, the resurrection of magic, I feel it is the stories that have held, like, the, I feel like there is sacred magic in these tales and these legends, and we've carried it from one generation to the next so that it would not be forgotten. And that's why I feel like we are here today holding the wisdom because the stories made sure it was not lost. Mm -hmm. And so I, that's why, and you are here sharing the story of someone you once knew. So their story is not lost. Yeah. And, and um, I want to light our candle for today um, to really bring in, uh, you know, our intention, which is the reclamation of magic, but to also honor all of those souls, all those souls that, lived in the darkness before this powerful reclamation of magic, all of those who faced the distortion, all of those who found themselves at the mercy of something they did not understand. And here in the sacred space, we bring our higher light. We pull together in the energy of divine love in the energy of the highest magic to come together with the intention of lighting the world once more with love, with peace, with joy and harmony. And so I'm lighting this candle for our reclamation of magic, but also to say that we are more powerful than the shadow. Mm. And so I'm lighting this. And so just wanted to share that because I think that there is something um, just so sacred, so sacred in the remembrance so sacred. And I feel like part of what you have done with the remembrance is all the stories of the witches. Like, I feel like all of the stories that you have brought through of the witches, I think that these are, these are people who've lived throughout time that have needed their stories told. And part of this reclamation of magic is once more, we get to share their stories. Yeah. So. It's so beautiful. So yeah, I'm going to stop talking because this is your show. And I just want to start with- It's yours, it's yours. I don't know, but I, <laughs> I, I know that you've got the sacred magic. I know that you've got the wisdom. So I'm going to just start uh, with uh, this very basic question. How do you see magic and what is magic to you? Ooh, ooh, ooh. And I instantly look, I have some pictures on the wall here and it says the magic is waiting for you. And I feel- that's the portal. So words are magic mm. for me. The stories are magic. These are all portals and way in to experience these blissful states of being. So I feel like it is. It's 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 all around us. It's here when we begin to clean out our ears, to lift the veil over our eyes that's been clouding our sight all this time to connect in with our senses and really, really remember the beauty of the synchronicity and the love that is in this world. Mm. So, yeah, it's like we can call in, you've cast a circle, that's magic. You've called in all these divine beings. We've called in the Kalia. She's very magical <laughs> and powerful. So it's, it's magic is power. Mm. I love that. I love yeah, that. Yeah. And I can feel that on my fingertips. It's like the power that is here on our fingertips, the energy that we can work with and that supports us to live yeah. out our soul mission here at this time. Yeah. I love that. I'm really getting the hit to ask you more about this kind of this idea of magic is power. And also I feel like you said the Kaliak really embodies that sacred medicine. I'm wondering if you can share like ways that the Kaliak has activated you and that sacred remembrance of magic as true power. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, oh. The Kaliak wishes to speak. <laughs> <laughs> so she was in my initiation into witch, as I, as I call it, when I went into the dungeons of Edinburgh three years ago, 
it was the Kalyach who came forth a few days later. I was like, now we've got her. Now we've got her. We've taken her into the dungeons. She's experienced this memory that she's now connecting to past lives that is lifting the veil to the lives that she once lives, that she needs to heal these wounds now in this life. Then she's like, yep, yeah, we've got her here. We've got her here. She's following the breadcrumbs. She's writing about it. She's beginning to share it. Then the Kalyach swooped in. So it was it was the witches for me, as you shared in the beginning. Then it was the Kalyach who swooped in a few days later with this massive thunder and lightning storm in reality. Like she, she who controls and plays with the weather. Like how magical is that? She swooped in and it was like she stood behind me and dictated this poem to me. The Kalyak witch speaks. And it felt like it was like she who is the creator of the Celtic lands. She who strips away the lies. Like she is so fierce. She will rip off that band-aid, that plaster to support you and then hold you lovingly as the tears and the emotions, the sadness and the grief are now free to be expressed because of all that has happened to so many of us mm. over the eons that we have lived here. Mm. So she, she is the creator. She is, she, the story is that she carries her rock babies in her apron which is the womb. So she is the primordial mother who has created all of us. So she is the mother that walks beside us. She doesn't want to actually be put on a pedestal and be revered. And, you know, she doesn't want any of that stuff anymore, I feel. I know she is here in the circle and walks beside us or hovers behind us so that we can feel her hand of support as the hag, as the crone mother. She's been called so many names, but she loves the hag. She loves being the hag. <laughs> to support us. Sorry, I know you want to speak, and I'm just, Kalia, Kalia, Kalia. <laughs> no, no, I want you to speak. And um, I, I love everything you're saying. I was just thinking, one thing that was coming through while you were talking is like yesterday, one of our speakers uh, yes, talked about the archetypes of like the witch. And she was talking about like, one of the shadow aspects of the witch being vanity. And I just like, I, that was what happened. It's, I was like internally laughing because you're like, the Kaliak loves being called. Like you said, I think you said the hag. Was it the hag or the Yes, crone? hag. Yeah. Hag and crone. Yeah. That. I love it. <laughs> it's like, and I just feel that there's this like glorious embrace. I'm almost seeing like someone like, I feel like, like almost like putting mud on their face. Like I am one with the earth. The earth is one with me. I am ancient as time itself. Oh my God. So I just, yeah. Love yes. And it is, it's like, I dare you call me witch, call mm -hmm. me hag. Cause I've been called worse names. And now that was for me. Once I clambered out of the dungeons and saw the light again, oh, then it was about healing the word witch mm -hmm. and hag. And where do we heal it? We heal it in here in our bodies. Cause she is also the bone mother. Yes. And it's like, rattle your bones until you listen. I love that. I'm curious. I know that you and I have talked about us a little bit before, but I think for people who are new to you, can you talk about ways that the Kali, like you said, rattled your bones and made you listen to follow that sacred call of your own heart? I would love to hear more of your story. Yeah, yeah. So she dictated that, that poem uh, initially back in August 2020 when I had the initial initiation, witch awakening. And so she, for me, she gifts me these words and then is like, share them, share them, share them. Or I will keep waking you up during the night. I'll keep feeding you these words. And if you don't share them, you'll explode. And that's not going to be a pretty sight. So she's helped me to reclaim my voice because the first place and I'm only realizing this this week it's no coincidence that you're you know it's because of the event because of speaking here that the first place I noticed my witch wound that was manifesting within me was in my voice and I'm doing this it was like oh, you know those lifetimes where I've been silenced over and over again so she's rattling my bones until I speak 
speak and share her words. And the first time I shared her words and spoke and opened up about my witch experience that I'd only, you know, it was all very quick. My voice went. Mm. My voice went and I was live on YouTube. And, you know, I come from a corporate background. You don't, you've got to be professional. You need your voice to speak. (laughs) (laughs) What are you going to do? Stand there with your mouth open going, oh, I can't speak. The colleague stopped my voice. (laughs) So she, I feel like she helped and supported me through that portal of stripping away the layers so that I really connect with the truth of my voice. And I feel my heart so warm now. It's like that it comes from this place deep, deep, deep within. I know. I mean, I don't know. know, Voice has a very melodic, soothing quality to it. I feel Mm. like it is just like just me just being totally honest. Like I feel like it literally contains like the power of the land when you speak. I just Mm. I feel the earth contained in your voice. There is a it's it's interesting because. I'm, I'm more of a very sensory person, but I feel the softness of like a blade of grass when you speak. And I also feel like the rock, like the way there, those like, you know, that beautiful, beautiful, hard shape of the rock. I really just feel like you are holding the land when you speak. I feel like it's actually just part of you and every sacred emanation you utter into this space. It is the land moving through you into the ether, into the air. So Ooh. I just feel like, I don't know why I felt called to say that to you, but Thank I just you. want you to know that like your voice is very powerful and mm. you're talking today about the reclamation of magic. I think one of the things too, is the reclamation of voice because yes. in all of the traditions, it's like abracadabra. It is the words of power, the words of magic. And so and in, there's so many traditions, like, for example, like Hinduism, um, even the uh, the Kabbalistic tradition, the universe is begun through the emanation of sound. Mm. I think for the, for the, in the Hindu tradition, it's the word Om. And uh, I believe in the Kabbalistic tradition, it is Hebrew letters. Hold on. Um, team Magical Storytelling. Can we mute everyone? Hi, Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> and hi, Michelle, who came in earlier. <laughs> Yes, I know. I like, I know. I'm so happy we have a beautiful audience. Hi, hi. Uh, but um, it's interesting because it's like, like, I really feel like sound really is primal power. Like sound is power. And so if we're talking about the reclamation of power um, and as, as the key ingredient in the reclamation of magic, of course, the voice is being activated because it's that principal instrument of sound. And so I just feel like one thing that I is kind of coming through for me, uh, Wendy said hi to both of us. One thing that's really kind of coming through, and I think it's important for the audience too, because I think a lot of people do work with their throat chakra. I've seen this a lot. Um, and they think that, like, okay, I've done all this healing. And I think that there are layers. I think that Mm -hmm. the throat chakra that we just get activated deeper and deeper uh because. As we, I think, increase our power, our potency and our magic, what we need to bring through is coming from an even deeper, more powerful place. So our voice has to kind of rise to meet that. So I'm actually just curious. Okay, this is my question for you. How has your voice stepped into its magic? more and more from this very beginning, like you said, when the Kaliak first, like you said, like the voice was taken away and now here you are now, please tell us about the evolution of your voice, the sacred, the sacred reclamation of this kind of sound magic. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And I love that Michelle has just written, I tried to sneak in so quietly and it, it, it just feels so relevant to voice because when I first started speaking, my voice I thought it was my voice but it was so so quiet and I was so scared speaking these words and what I was scared of was the power and the potential that my soul knows and knew was in my voice and I let go you know shedding the skins of all the stuff all the shite all the conditioning so that the truth can come through so yes healing our throat chakras that was the number one thing for me back back then and it continues to be it is an evolution and what I'm finding now is that 
because another aspect of the Kaliach witch was about reclaiming the throne, reclaiming her throne, reclaiming my throne. So what I'm only realizing, I only realized this yesterday, was that this was just the first part, the throat, reconnecting my head with my body <laughs> and letting, <laughs> letting the energy begin to flow freely again. Because now, you know, I think, you know, I love, I, I dipped in and out to some of your talks and you said the word resurrection so much. And I love that because that was my dad's final word before he died, before he passed on. So it feels really resonant for me and personal as well. I love the resurrection, the rising up. And that's what the witches said, rise up and return to your power. But I'm only beginning to really understand what this means at a deeper level, because in order for the high magic to be so magical, in order for us to resurrect and reclaim our power, we've got to go down. Mm. We've got to go down. And that's a place that I don't want to go to. I don't like swimming in deep water. <laughs> that's scary that's scary but where the Kaliak has led me is yes I've gone and sat on her stone throne which is at the sacred site of Loch Cru in Ireland has anyone been there let us know in the chat it's a beautiful cairn um, stone cairn and inside it is a portal it is a womb it is a place of birth, death, rebirth. It is a sounding chamber. So when you talk about the first sounds, ohm, ohm, and all, and it, these are the places where these were sounded. Oh, and yeah, so these are the portals. And for me, she's taking me down with her <laughs> <laughs> to the lower chakras. So yeah, it's reclaiming all these parts. And only yesterday I had a really visceral experience of being taken down to the Kalyach. And I ended up, I was, it was in a in a journey. And I ended up, I was standing, you know, I had walked so far along my path, and I was standing before this chasm, like this gaping hole, and I'm looking over and trying to stop myself from falling in the Kaliach behind me and what happened then was it became as I connected with my lower chakras it became a swirling cauldron of molten golden lava oh my goodness lava oh my this is the Kaliach's energy and it was I could feel it and I can feel the heat now as I'm sharing this and it was swirling just really gently like it was hypnotizing me and as I stood there, I wasn't scared. I wasn't afraid. It felt really powerful. As I stood there, out of the corner of my eye, in this vision, a serpent began to rise. I know. And the oh serpent God. was the same color as the fire, golden, red, orange. And I could see the serpent's tongue, red, red. And the serpent came in front of me. It was like tongue out red red tongue serpent's red tongue I'm like whoa hello <laughs> where have you been and uh it was this like speak serpent connect with the snake the energy and then I remembered oh there's this dream I had back in 2018 this is the spiral of the story so it will all make sense and I found my dream journal from 2018 because I felt this might come up today. The 16th of December, 2018, I had this dream of a tree with big brown roots that grew up towards the branches like snakes. That's all I wrote. And then at the end, I wrote snake roots. And I've got pictures of snakes rising up beside the tree. Really bad picture. I'm not even going to share it. <laughs> and then I've got spirals. And then I've got these vortexes which I connect with the Kaliach so what I realize is that it is it, it's the Kundalini energy mm. that's reawakening but once and needs this space to shed our skin to let go of the old narratives and even that may mean letting go of some of the myths as mm. well that are Absolutely. no longer 
serving. You know, and serving, we need to leave them in the past. I, I, I wanted to share this. I don't mean to cut you off, but it's interesting that yesterday, astrologically, um, one of my speakers told me that there's actually like, it's like, it was like a zero, zero, zero point. It was like a reset point. And it's like one of those things where it's like, you can't make this up. Like I didn't know when I like set this, like I knew it was supposed to be these three days, like for this, uh, for the sacred reclamation of magic. I didn't realize that we were going into a reset point. And I feel like when I say like a reset point, I think that there are many reset points, but it's almost like, what if it was the reset? What if it was like you walk through the portal and you were different on the other side? And like you said, what if we release those myths and not just said we release them, but we actually did. And that's what I'm feeling too. When you talk about that energy of resurrection and that Kundalini spiraling up, I feel like when, when Kundalini shows up, it's because you have been activated. It's like, I think that's the whole thing is, I mean, I know that people have different experiences with Kundalini, but I just feel like for me, Kundalini energy helps me step into the truth of who I am. And, Mm -hmm. and I feel that, you know, for every single person, I know that we're all on different stages of our journey, but it really is that Shakti. It is that feminine power that rises up the spine. And I just really feel that Kundalini invites you to, like you said, release those past stories, those past energies, all that does not serve you because it cannot go with you to the new earth. And I feel like that's part of what the Kaliak was bringing for you, the sacred activation, because you are going through that portal. And that's, I'm just really like wanting to reflect that back to you. Oh, that's so powerful. Yes. The reset. And it's, it's like this cleansing of energy so that, because we need the space, we need the spaciousness in our bodies as well for this to begin to rise. And it's like nothing that, that I've felt before, especially with the Kalyach as well. And, um, you know, and I love, I love receiving the words and sharing them and speaking them. This was taking it to whole other levels within mm. me. And, um, yeah it's like where because I connect to fire so much oh of course and befriending the flames of the fire has been such a journey and I know we both feel connected to the fire and that fire is the portal as well that we can go go Mm -hmm. through the flames now because we're not being burned they're not going to burn us in this life Mm -hmm. ever again and yeah, it was like this new energy. It felt like such a power source to be able to connect in with this molten lava source. I love that because I think, okay, I don't, my, my geology is not the best, but I think like, isn't the molten lava, like it, I know once it cools, it creates new life. That's the yes. whole thing. It, it like, it cools and that's like when life can start again. So I love that because I think we've talked about, we've talked about fire. We've, you and I have talked about gold even. And, but I really feel that lava, that is something else. Because I, I'm actually thinking, I reminded, I won't go into this whole story, but one of the coolest things I ever did was climb Mount Vesuvius. Mm-hmm. And it was like one of the coolest things. And I was so proud of myself because I was 15 and it was like in Italy, like a lot of times people are just, they're on strike. I don't know why this happens a lot. And so we were basically going there and it was like, oh no, we were supposed to go to Pompeii and the people in Pompeii were on strike. So my Italian teacher was like, well, there's an option. We could climb Vesuvius and no one in my trip, it was like a bunch of high school kids. No one wanted to. And I had done a paper on Vesuvius and I was like, no, this is history. We must. And I was like, this is, I was a very, very shy young person. And yes, no, this was my moment that I convinced that I was like, we need to, I spoke and speak. Oh, that's why I think this is coming up. I spoke. And I was always someone who was in the back, never spoke super quiet. And I was like, this is important. We have to do this. And I convinced it was like 20, it was like 20 like high school kids to climb this beautiful volcano with me. And it was so interesting because some of them were like, what if this just explodes at any moment? What if this volcano were just, I'm like, I was, and it was weird because this was before I was really awakened and like a higher spiritual consciousness, but it was like, no, that knowledge that you can trust the earth, that we can be aware of the rhythms. Um, and like, even the lava is no cause for us to be afraid. So 
That's kind of what's coming through is because I feel like for a lot of people, they fear that. And I think for someone like you and me, who like, we have such a deep connection to fire and like, we are so deeply connected to the earth, as I'm sure so many people here are very deeply connected to the earth. We, we need not fear the lava that brings about the rebirth. We need not fear it. We can actually embrace it and see its beauty. And it sounds like that's yeah. what you're doing. Oh, that's so powerful. And it reminds me of a soul retrieval I had in 2017. Mm -hmm. And one of the gifts, gosh, it's all coming together now, weaving together beautifully. This is also magic, real time, alive, weaving magic. That one of the gifts was that he he was asked to reach in to a pool of lava. (laughs) I know. And I remember he was relaying this afterwards, the guy who who did the journey for him on my behalf. And he was like, "Uh, no, no, I don't want it. You need it safe now. And the message was to feel the fire within and to feed the fire within. So, yeah. Welcome, Iona. (laughs) Yes, I was like, I was like, I know it's so funny. I think we're always happy for all the people coming in. Um, but yeah, I love that to feed the fire. Oh my yeah, God. Yeah, and the, and the lava, yeah, it cools and it creates basalt. It creates rock. It creates new lands. And I was, I was taken to, um, when you were sharing your story of the volcano and climbing Vesuvius, I was just picturing the Giant's Causeway in Northern Ireland and how the rock has cooled in hexagonal cubes. It's like the, um, the Isle of Staffa in Scotland. Uh, it's it's like these columns of I think it's the hexagonal shape it's really really amazing right by the ocean yeah and it's interesting one thing that I think from the first conversations I ever had with you you've always talked about the stones being wisdom keepers and like the sacred storytellers and I think it's interesting because now the way I'm feeling into the stones I never realized like when you think about like the lava forming some of these like I wish that my geology terms were better, but you know what I'm saying? Like forming these beautiful formations. I really feel like it's almost like we get to really meet that, that it's almost like the primary essence of creation. That's what I feel like is in the lava. That's what it contains because to think like to create on that big scale, I don't know how, I don't know how hot lava is. I don't know if it's like thousands, Very of, hot. you know, but it's like that it's like, as humans, we couldn't touch something like that. We we can't yeah. physically touch that. It would be too much for us, but God can. That's the whole thing is, I feel like, I think that's the whole thing is I think like connecting with the, the consciousness, the energy of the lava is like connecting with that energy of primal first creation. Mm-hmm. And that's what I'm just really feeling for you is like, and that's why when we're talking about being activated in this like new level of power, activating this new level of magic, it actually makes sense. I'm sorry. I'm trying to weave all the stuff together. I'm so excited because we we started today talking about sacred sound. And I just really feel like sound itself is this force of creation. And I feel like everything we're talking about here today really is bringing us back to that first moment, that, that first spark of creation. And I really feel like it's being embodied here in the story of you with the lava. Yes. Yes. And that is the Kalya. And you know, she says, I am your mother, dear child, and I hear your worries and your lies. And so she's she's here and she wants us to remember the power within us that cannot be rebuked anymore. I love that. Oh my god. Yeah. Cool. yeah. So yeah, and there was one more part of that, the the snake thing, you know, yes. that just the final bit was that the snake was there in front of me in this journey sticking his tongue out and and I'm like well yeah what do you want now Uh, (laughs) uh, you want me to speak snake and serpentine and and I know people do and that's that's very Harry Potter I gotta say (laughs) oh yeah I like this but then it was like this after going down into the chakras and almost the shock of that you know going in into the fiery cauldron then at this calmness descended over me honestly like again like I haven't felt and I had written poems about being the calm in the center of the storm and this was like whole new levels of it as the vortex was spinning around me I'm here I am I am 
I am this rod. I am this energetic rod. I am the tree of life. Ooh. Oh my so, God. Yeah. So I can connect. I love the light. I love it. And I can go down as well mm. and still find my way back to the here and the now. So it was like whole new levels. So that dream back in 2018 is like weaving into the, the here and now again with that journey I went on yesterday. And I'm sharing it with all of you today. <laughs> yeah, it's so beautiful. I think it's that reminder that time isn't linear. So it's like, yes. you can have something happen like two years ago and it's like, oh, I had this activation. And like, it seems like it doesn't bear any fruit. Fast forward two years and there all of a sudden, like that was what the moment was for. I love that. And I I love everything we're saying, but I, I want to make sure we tie this in. I think we've been talking subtly about the reclamation of magic, but I'd like to really address it head on. So I'm just curious if you can share more about this reclamation of magic that I really feel is sweeping the earth. And I know that over the, like the last couple of months, I know, I know you just had a beautiful uh, weekend retreat uh, that you shared with some women. I think there was a lot of energy, like you said, the reclamation of magic there. And I also know that you spoke at like a live event sometime earlier in the summer. So I'm just curious if you can share some of those experiences because they sounded, I mean, I I know I just read about them from afar via email, but they sounded so powerful. And so I'd love to hear more about this powerful reclamation of magic that you're really spearheading. That's what I'm getting. Like you really are on the leading edge, the cutting edge, bringing this back for people. Yeah, I love that, the cutting edge. Maybe that was part of being at the edge of that chasm as well. Yes. <laughs> like, ooh. You and I'm telling you, I feel like you just always go first. That's my sense with you. Like, you are. Like, like, <laughs> I love this. Someone just wrote in the chat, like, Emer, the tip of the fiery hour. You really are, though. And uh, I think sometimes that oh, we don't really see ourselves the way that others see us. And so that's yeah. what I want to say. It's like, I just really feel like you're always at that cutting edge. And so I'm going to go silent because I want to hear all about this. Oh, yeah. So the Witches Revival was the first event that was in August, I think it was. So that was actually one of the first events I've spoken at since like in the last three years, live in person with real people. So you see people's full bodies outside these screens that we've been sitting in front hey, of. You have legs? Really? <laughs> Oh, you're tall. Oh, I you're know. <laughs> it's really so when I arrived there, so I was sharing about the catalytic cry of the witches and my witch awakening story, stroke initiation that keeps on going. And it's like the, the initiation that never ends. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it was so powerful. Again, I felt the Kalya. I felt her, I was standing up, it was in front of people, the energy in the room, the energy in the whole space that was created by the wonderful people that, that created the event. Um, yeah, it was a huge, huge experience. And um, I feel like I'm still integrating all of these experiences actually from being out in the wild speaking and then coming back in and you know, letting it all land within, within my body. But it was a huge sense of pride, actually, of being able to speak and share the stories of the witches. Coming back to what you spoke of in the very beginning about the, the stories of the people that have or may have been forgotten or misrepresented in the written down lore, perhaps. Mm. So it felt like a real honoring, but also about that mirroring and reflection of what our storytelling and these sharings, how they move others as well. And that was really beautiful to receive. It felt very, very magical. And the next, yeah, the next event then was my own in-person retreat that had birthed forth in like January, February of this year. And that was a real journey to put this event on my first in-person event from it in three years it was since all that shenanigans a few years ago and it was really powerful but it really invited it, it invited me to anchor in even more deeply into my own power to hold this space and call in the women and the men that were gonna 
commune in circle once again on these sacred lands of Scotland. So there was a lot of fear to, to navigate as well for me, putting this event out and hosting it. And yeah, the power of, we know this, the power of what happens when we gather in circle together. It, it showed me, so I was running the event and Cheryl, who's speaking in your event too, came along and was doing a soul ceremony. But the magic that happened was that the night before Cheryl stayed here in my house and I was showing her the plan of the weekend. And then she was like, um, I think you need to tear up that plan and step <laughs> away from it. I'm like, no, I've spent months on this. <laughs> It's like, yeah, what would it be to trust? To trust that everything you have is here and let the plan go and create the space for the new that wants to come in. And so I did with shaky knees. And on day one, I told the group, the plan has been put to the side and we're opening up to the magic, the true, alive, visceral magic that wants to happen here for this weekend. And it rained and it poured two months, a month's worth of rain that weekend. Oh that's my the power. Yeah, that's the power of, and it was worst in the area that we were in. That's the power of when witches gather. <laughs> and I was in the circle. I was in the center, but I was also holding the circle to invite others to share their craft as well. Mm. So others stepped in. And yeah, we had the most beautiful ceremony where someone brought their sacred oils and anointed us. Oh, we had shamanic journey. And then Cheryl stepped in and did amazing healings for people. All like it was really, really powerful. So it was a reminder of that magic that is here. And we let the old go and step in bravely, courageously trusting the, the new, the new places we're being guided to. I love that. I'm, I'm yes. so, the same boat as you. I'm someone I over-prepare. I'm like, but I, I, I always over-prepare, but I, I think that for me, it also lets me when I do show up, I can surrender to the magic, you know? And I think that's what kind of happens is I feel like sometimes you're right. Like those things hold us back because in the moment, there's so much alignment in the moment. That's when the wisdom is, it's always there in the now. So it's like, I feel like, how could you know what that space of like women and men who came for that sacred weekend, how could you know the magic that was afoot to you right there in that sacred moment? Yeah. And so yeah. it's just, that the magic is in the now. And I just, I feel like that's kind of the message too, is that we're talking about the reclamation of magic and it seems almost like this kind of out there thing, but it's like, it's all in the now. And I think that's what you experience firsthand in your retreat, where it's like, yeah. What is the magic that's here in this space? Well, there was even a moment because I'd meant to do like a playlist and, you know, have that playing. And there was a moment I'm like, oh, I wish I had music because you know, we were drumming. And, and then one of the girls just steps in and starts singing in this most beautiful. Oh, I love that. Voices. And so that was our soundtrack, our own voices singing all weekend. Oh that is amazing. A lot of songs came through. Yeah. Yeah. I have a dream was one of the big songs that, that came through for the weekend. That is beautiful. Um, yeah. That we all dream weave together. I love that so much. And it just yeah. sounds amazing. We started talking about today about the power of voice. And I think one thing that also really comes through, and I know you have to go in just a couple of minutes because you have another class you're teaching. It's okay. Um, it's not, it's actually not till four, but it's, you know, it's, I know you've got another speaker after this, so. Okay, so no, then we have, then we have like eight minutes. I thought we only had three minutes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, but no, I was just thinking. Um, bending time. I know we are bending time. <laughs> I, no, it's, I, you actually just are so psychic right now. That's actually one of the activations I'm bringing through either today or tomorrow. So like, I'm not kidding. <laughs> it's like, that's the power. I feel like, again, of like the weaving it's all, but it's also, I feel like one thing I want to presence is that I do feel that when things, when we, when we join together, there are things that are just in the ether. 
I just, I love that, but I, I want to share and then and we can share. I think that's part of what happens is the magic is something we share with each other. So, I mean, like, yes, we can experience it in ourselves, but I think the greatest magic we experience together. And the reason I'm sharing that Emer, is because I really feel like it's, it's reminiscent to me. Like the weekend you described, it reminded me so much of all the beautiful work you did. I think it was last year around this time, the witches reclaiming their own table. And I just really feel like that is like what you just described. It's like everyone was like, oh, you like, yes, like you were like the one holding the retreat, but someone else brought through like their sacred oil. Someone else sang. It's like there is that great energy of equality. I just, yes, I, I just, I really want to, to bring voice to that. Because like, oh, I feel like man. there's always the Arthur, there's always the leader of the round table, but it's like, then there's still that great sense of equality. The leader brings them together so they can each stand strong in their magic and stand strong in their power. So I just want to reflect wow. that to you. Wow. That's really beautiful. That's, that's exactly what it was. But I also yeah. love um, what's kind of coming through is that I feel like you cast that sacred intention, uh, you know, a year ago when you held that, which is reclaiming the round table retreat. Um, and I just really feel like sometimes like I know that like there was so much reclamation of magic in that event and there were so many people standing as equal. But I feel like when you plant those sacred seeds, they don't stop fruiting. That's the sense I'm getting. And it's like, mm. when you cast that creation, like when you cast that magical spell of creation out into the world, there's that ripple effect. And I feel like that seed just keeps, I just feel like you're going to see more of this. It's like blossoming after blossoming of the sacred intention that you cast last year. Mm, that's beautiful. And that is the magic, isn't it? Through our intentions, whether they're conscious or not. Yes. So beautiful. No, absolutely. And I just want to share, I think one thing that's really interesting, and I, I want to just kind of open this up to just like, I feel like the mystery is we talked today about reclamation of magic, like, and words of power, the, like the power of the voice, but also I think that true magic, there is a dance, like there, there is voice, but there's also, I think intention reigns supreme. Mm -hmm. And, and I feel like there is a marriage between like sacred voice, sacred intention. And I just really want to honor all of it coming together for, for you, for me, for all of us here in this divine sacred space. I just really feel that we are the ones seeding the magic for, for this world now, but also for generations to come. And so I'm just so grateful to you, Ema, for being one of the magic makers, the ones seeding this resurrection of magic here on the planet at this time. It is just so mm -hmm. powerful. Thank you so much. Thank you. There were, there were four lines that came through from that serpent experience. That I could read out if you love want. to hear them. Absolutely. I wrote quite a bit, but it's these four seem to be. So, yeah, feel your power. You are source. Feel your power, pure royal gold. Feel your power, tree of life. Free your power, molten lava light. Oh my God. Oh my God. That is perfect. Uh, I'm just like receiving that. That is so beautiful. Um, so I know I want to, your, I know your free gift is, um, I, you, I feel like it's the, the one I have for you is the Kaliak meditation, yeah. which is perfect. But I'm wondering before we share more about that, if you have any final words for our audience, if there's anything else you feel called to share. Gosh, it's a trust is immediately what comes to mind. And I know that can be a tricky word to navigate. <laughs> um, yeah, the magic that really, truly happens when we trust and surrender to the spaciousness for this magic to arise and arrive within us. It really is amazing and liberating and freeing when we begin to let go. And as you talk about the seeds and the blossoming, then that can all continue to happen. Mm, I love that. I know. I, I think that kind of what's interesting as you're talking, I know that in the past when I have been trusted, I've been in doubt. That's when like, it's almost like then the creations don't blossom the way they're meant to. And so it really is that like, it really is. I, I feel like it's almost like a devotional practice coming back in. Do I trust the divine? Do I trust my guides? Do I trust my purpose? And I just yeah. feel like and it's, I just, I just think that it's one of those things that like sometimes trust isn't easy, but I feel like that is the secret to true magic. 
That's what mm-hmm. I feel like we have to. And that's why that came through. I think that I feel like trust is the secret ingredient, the magic ingredient that makes everything work. So mm, I, I call on the Kalia as well. If yes. you're ready for her energies. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> if we ever are, the call on her. Yeah. The creator of the mm-hmm. Celtic lands and beyond. I love that. So I also want to just invite you to share about your free gift for anyone, just for anyone who wants that deeper initiation with the Kalia. Yeah, yeah, go for it. So it's it's a meditation because I had another vision a while ago where it wasn't even a vision. This Kalyak sucked me into this vortex that became an umbilicus that was like a reversal of a rebirth. So it was like I had no choice. I was going there. And it was a really powerful portal that she brought me into that then guided me to different places on the land and within me that needed healing. So it's all part of the healing process so that's my free gift is that meditation journey with the Kalyach showing her the utmost respect and reverence for who she is as she walks alongside each one of us I love that I I feel like every time you like bring in the energy of the Kalyach it's almost like my body gets like like there's like a reverence it's it's so funny because it's not even happening at a conscious level it's like my body's like oh my god the Kalyach is here and so I just share that because I really feel like what you describe is that like, it's like when you work with a colleague, you are transformed body, mind, and spirit. That's mm-hmm. why I think she's so potent. And I think a lot of like different like deities we work with, like, I think they do meet us in consciousness, but what seems to be so extraordinary about the Kaliak, it seems like the power, the true power of the Kaliak, it is through the earth. That's what yeah. it feels like. It is like, that is, I feel like how you step into your full power And so it seems like she holds like the sacred keys, the sacred wisdom and medicine that I think we have been seeking for that true reclamation of magic. Yeah. Yeah. And she's here now going, here they are. Come (laughs) down, (laughs) come. I know. I love this. I love this. So she has also has that playful energy, I feel, or maybe that's just me, you know, the fairy in me. (laughs) Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure it's, I mean, think of like, I feel like even the most stern, like grandmothers, they always have that little thing that makes them smile. So Mm -hmm. yes, absolutely. Um, So I think we're at the time, but it has been such a pleasure as always to connect with you. And I'm just sending you so much love. I was so excited for a conversation and I love this visionary experience you have with the lava. I, I think that you need to go deeper. I think you need to just really go deeper. And I'm so, I'm so grateful that like you shared this with, with everyone here when this literally just happened yesterday. Yeah. Um, it sounds like such an extraordinary, such a very potent, almost, um, I feel like life changing experience. Yeah. 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 And when you say you have to go deeper and then I'm thinking, how much deeper can you go? And then it opens up again. Yes, I know. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> yes. I feel like the colleague, like, there's, I feel like she's almost like, there's always another layer. There's yeah. always a little bit yeah. deeper. You can go in the cavern of the earth. So. Yeah. Yeah. And the magical ripples that you're creating with this has enabled me to share this today and probably why the experience happened only yesterday. Oh my God. Okay. That makes me really yeah. happy because it was so yeah. funny. I, again, I know, I, I know I've got to bring on my next speaker, but it's so funny because it was like, we didn't really have a plan for it today and I was guided to trust and that's why it's perfect. It was like, yeah. okay. We're and just weave. We're just weave. And so it's so beautiful. Okay. So I am going to let you go and I will see you. Hopefully I'll see you very soon. I'm sending you so yeah. much. Thank you. And thanks everyone. Bye.